Welcome to lesson number two of this Open Java course. In the previous video, we learned how to create and run our first project. If you haven't seen it yet, I recommend you to start there, because in this video, we assume that you have that knowledge. In this lesson, we are going to create more entities of our project, we are going to relate them to each other, and you are going to have your application up and running in no time. we will create the entities for our invoicing application. The domain model is rather basic, but enough to learn a lot of interesting things. And from lesson one, remember, we already have an initial version of customer and product, and we will add a few more. Let's start with the most simple case. We are going to create a category entity and associate it to product. Let's add the annotations we learned in lesson one. We have entity, getter, and setter. The code for category entity only has an identifier and a description property. First, we have ID annotation, and as it is an internal identifier, and we are not going to show it to the user, we add the annotation hidden. Also, to generate the identifier, we are going to add the notation generated value. We use the UUID system, that means universally unique identifier. And this goes along with the notation generic generator. Name, system UUID, strategy UUID also. We define the length of our column. And the same for description. And we press save or control S and this will import all the notations we need. Now we are going to run the category module as we saw in the previous video. Right, and we are going to add some categories like book, music, and software. And now we are going to associate product with category. We open the product entity. And add the category reference declaration with JPA many to one relationship. Then we have fetch, fetch type that lazy, so that the reference is load on demand. That means customer data will not be load until it is used for the first time. And this optional true, so that the reference can have no value. And finally, description list, thus the reference is displayed using a combo. For example, let's add the book. And in this case, thanks to the description list annotation, it is displayed as a combo. 
Now it's time to complete our product entity. Product entity needs to have attributes such as price and photos. And it would be nice to have a field for remarks. So let's add the price. Big decimal is typically used for money. And the annotation. Now let's add photos. Needs a column. Because the 32 length string is for storing the key of the gallery. And we set a field for remarks. Great. Let's save our work. And let's run the model for the product. Now we have a product ready to use, so let's refine customer now, adding an address. The customer address is not shared by other customers, and when the customer is removed, the address is removed too. And that's why we will model the address concept as an embeddable class. Let's add the address class to our project. And we are going to use embeddable instead of entity. And let's add some properties. And this is the same as in entities. Although embeddable classes do not support all the functionality of the entities. And done. We can use address in any entity. Now we just need to add a reference to our customer entity. And the way to reference an embeddable class is with the notation embedded. Let's see how it works. Great, here is our address. As you can see, regarding the user interface, there is a frame around address that if you don't like it, it can be removed. We only have to annotate the reference with no frame. Let's see. And here it is, the user interface for an embedded reference with no frame annotation. Great, we just finished lesson two. In the next one, we will continue to improve the user interface, adding validations, business logic, collections, and more. If you have any question, please leave us your comment. And if you're not, see you in lesson three. Bye.